SW Dweeb recently did a little series of videos on the good and the bad way of pouring your castings and I'll leave a, a link in this video uh, to that series because if you're interested in producing good castings it really is worth seeing. He very successfully and clearly demonstrated the difference between good uh, sprue technique and bad sprue technique. It, it, it's well worth seeing. Now in that in the comments to those videos, um, the subject of caustic soda etching of aluminium to show the true extent of porosity in all its wondrous glory um, was discussed a bit. Now, I mentioned at the time that I had recently done some work like this, um, and people said, well, show the photographs. So this is a short video, well, maybe not that short, um, doing that. Now, I'd had a young lad here casting uh, two dies for me for a day uh, and at the end of the day the metal had been sitting in the uh, pot that we were ladling from for about seven hours at between 750 and 770 degrees centigrade. At the end of the casting you need to bale the, the, the pot out and I did this and when I made the ingots I observed them fizzing a bit like soft drink and I thought this isn't good. It was clearly gas coming out of the metal as it solidified. This is unusual for this alloy and I've done this many times over 30 years and I've only ever had this once before. Maybe it was an extra humid day and the metal had picked up more gas, I don't know. But this is what I got and you can see these bumps, little bumps all over this, and in fact they're quite rough. What they are is hydrogen bubbles that have come to the surface but they haven't had the strength to sort of burst through the oxide skin and, and escape into the air. So what I did, I got one of the ingots that showed this quite badly, this one in fact, and I cut this slice out of it, and I did some work on polishing and etching this sample. Now, I'll show stills of all of that shortly, but to further investigate uh, what happened and to show the process a bit better, I took an ingot like that because I'd also made a few of those at the same time out of the same metal, took a slice out of it and did the same etching and polishing trick. And I'll now show you a, a, a series of stills and a little bit more video of the process of going through and etching that to produce the photographs I took in the end. First though, a quick word about the alloy used here. It is the 12% silicon eutectic alloy. 401 here in Australia, LM6 in the UK and 413 in the US. It solidifies at one temperature rather than over a range and is thus a skin former. Prone to gross shrinkage cavities and marked feeder pipes, it machines poorly. Here are some stills of the triangular slice, one side at a time. First we have the sample as sanded. You can see most of the coarse porosity, but not really all that much of the fine stuff. Now we have the sample etched, uh, and the porosity is beginning to be revealed a bit more, but it's partially covered by the etch. Finally, the sample uh, that's been slightly polished after etching, and now the porosity is really, really visible, and you can see it very, very clearly. Let's have a closer look at some of that porosity. In the circle it's at first magnified two and a half times and then it slowly fades back to normal size. Here we go, two and a half times and now we are just starting to fade back and there we go, it's back to true size. And here is the other side of that slice. First of all again the as sanded, uh, you can see some of the porosity then the etched uh, with the grey area in the middle it was last to freeze and the porosity is a bit more obvious and then finally the etched and sanded afterwards and we can see a lot more of the porosity again. Let's have another close-up. Keep your eye on the yellow circle as we zoom in here. 
it surrounds one of the very few pieces of genuine gas porosity in this sample. This small gas bubble lacked the strength to break through the oxide skin and is in fact caught underneath it. The remainder of the porosity in this sample is in fact quite gross shrinkage, typical of a short freezing range alloy like this. Now that we've got our uh, little slice um, sanded either side, it's time to do a bit of uh, caustic etching on it. Now, first of all, this is what I'm going to use a solution of. Caustic soda, active constituent, 980 grams per kilogram of sodium hydroxide at 98% caustic soda. If you can't get pure caustic soda like this, then uh, the average drain cleaner will have a good deal of caustic soda into it in it rather you just need to look at the label to work out how much and adjust things appropriately okay let's let's just see what we can weigh up here start off with a bit of water Three hundred ml of water. I want about a twenty percent caustic solution, so more or less sixty grams of caustic soda. Got to be careful adding caustic to um, water. Uh, it gets hot, and in fact, it can get so hot that the water will boil and spit bits of the caustic back out at you. That's close enough. And I'll just put some gloves on before I uh, get any carried away anymore because now we've got uh, the caustic solution and it is quite corrosive, it will attack your skin. Uh, it's very hard to rinse off, you always wind up with this terrible slimy feeling on your hands. You can get rid of that and you can easily neutralise any caustic with a bit of vinegar. So it just possibly always pays when you're doing this to have some vinegar nearby in case you do spill it and slop it. Also when you're mixing it like this, you'll get some spray into the air and that can get into your uh, into your uh, nose and be a bit irritating. I'll just stir it up a little. It dissolves quite easily usually. It goes milky to start with but then it'll come good. Still a bit there. I'm just stirring it with a stainless steel ruler here. That seems as good as anything else that I could get my hands on. Okay. That's probably not too bad. I will remove the scales. That's quite warm. It has, as I suspected, uh, picked up a bit of heat. And the spray, uh, <laughs> I can feel it in the air getting at me a bit. So, all right, we'll drop this in carefully. I don't want to splash it. And this is what you should see happen. Lots of nice little bubbles of gas coming up. We'll give that, you know, 30 seconds, a minute, something like that. Put the lid back on the caustic while we're waiting. Okay. Now afterwards, when you finish with this, if you don't want to throw the caustic out, store it in a plastic container. Uh, not glass, because it will attack the glass, and make certain the container's got an airtight lid on it. That might be enough. Yeah, maybe a little more. Because the carbon dioxide in the air will, in fact, uh, uh, turn the caustic soda to sodium carbonate, and that won't do the job. That will be enough. Oh, that spray in the air, it really gets into your throat. <coughs> Just put this in a bit of water, rinse it off, move this aside, and here we have our <coughs> etched caustic soda etched aluminium sample. The grey area, <coughs> oh it sprays still in the air. That grey area is probably where it solidified last. And this would be typical because it would it would solidify quickly here against the steel mould that I cast it into, but the mould was a bit hot, so some of it would have frozen against the air too up here. And slowly, <coughs> we would work to the last liquid in the patch here in the middle with all the greys and all the shrinkages. But I'll now <coughs> take the close-ups of this. 
then we'll lightly sand it and take some more close-ups. Now let's have a look at the close-up series for this slice. Again, we'll do it one side of the slice at a time. The first image we see here uh, is of the machined surface. You can see the, some of the very coarse porosity, but that's about all. Uh, here we have the sanded surface, and you can see a bit more of the porosity. Now the etched surface, and again much more of the porosity shows, but it's hidden by the colour of the etch. Now finally, after a quick sand again, we can see how much porosity there really is in that particular sample. Now let's go to the second side of this slice and go through the sequence again. This slice was a bit closer to the centre of the ingot and we've got more gross porosity as a result. First the machine surface, then the sanded surface, now again the etched surface. Um, and you can see the grey area where solidification has occurred last and then finally we go to the etched and sanded surface and the porosity now is shown to its maximum extent. Now let's have a look at that in close-up. I will highlight some of the fine gas porosity that is mainly just under the top skin. None of this was visible as a machine and much not even when finely sanded. It took the etching to bring it out. Here we go, moving from fine bit of porosity to fine bit of porosity. These are very small holes. They would be around the six thousandths of an inch, 0.15 millimeter size. Typical of gas porosity in a casting like this. Now let's compare a machined against an etched and sanded. Clearly it is much easier to see the porosity in an etched sample. Machining, even good machining, smears metal over the porosity and covers it up.